So Good. I was on the bottom of the pyramid mostly every single time. <laughs> Wait, why? <laughs> I'm sure the people want to know. What does that contract look like? Like, like what are the numbers talking about? Like, wh- like what were they paying you back then? Got a whole team of music producers and recorders and a studio, and she's like, "You're gonna make music." I'm like, "Okay." Like, it was kind of every man for himself. Like, mm-hmm. it was mom and daughter against mom and daughter <laughs> against mom and daughter against yeah. dance teacher. So like, it was just a huge. Yo, 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 you wanna come out? Yo, what is up, podcast people? Welcome back to another edition of the Off Schedule Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Isaac Uku, with my co-host, Julio IMO, a.k.a. Boss. Hey, hey. All right. <laughs> what? And today, as you guys can see from the thumbnail and from looking at your screen right now, we have a very special guest with us. Very, Would you like very to introduce special. yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Kendall. And <laughs> I'm here to be on big, the podcast today. Big superstar. No. Big superstar. No. You know, this is the first time we're having a non-traditional sport athlete. We got she's a dancer. Watch by the it. Way. She's, she's a, an athlete. She's still no, an athlete now. I said traditional Thank sport. You. I know. I'm, not, I'm, not I'm specifying. She is an athlete, <laughs> probably more athletic than both of us with the flips and the jumping Everything around and all that saying. stuff. But nah, so let's jump right into it. Let's do it. So you started dancing at 18 months old, is that correct? I did. I started basically when I was out of diapers. Oh, for real. So was that your idea or or your parents' idea? So I have two older sisters that actually like no one knows about mm-hmm. because <laughs> I'm the favorite child, I'm the best <laughs> child ever. No, I'm kidding. Um, but my oldest sister, she started dancing obviously years before me, and I would always go to her dance competitions and I would go to the practices and then I would just like stand in the back and start dancing. And my mom was like, "Okay, we'll put you in dance." Yeah. And so I did that in softball when I was like really really young, and then I just loved because i was there with my sister yeah and dance is a really competitive sport like mm-hmm. it, it was always so interesting we had competitions every weekend i mean thousands of dollars were spent on dance costumes yeah. so it's definitely <laughs> it's definitely a lot of work but it's been my life since i was literally two years old yeah that's crazy i didn't start sports till i was probably like closer to like 10 so because like as a kid obviously you're outside running and hitting people right. and stuff like that but <laughs> organized hitting, sports bro? i didn't start <laughs> Why are you huh? so violent? Hitting I, people I as a football. kid. I mean, that's just. You're telling me you didn't get. We're not rough. talking about me. <laughs> We're talking about him. All right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So obviously, you started dancing at a young age. How did it? How did that lead into you getting on Dance Moms? Like how? Like walk us through that process. Like how that started. <laughs> A lot of the questions you're going to ask me today, I honestly probably don't even know the real correct answer to them because I'm so blindsided to my entire (laughs) life. But I competed at a dance studio like an hour from Abby Lee Dance Company, which is Dance Moms. And somehow the producers got in contact with my mom. And we lived in Pittsburgh at the time. Everyone was from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And they reached out to us and they said, are you interested in filming an episode of Dance Moms? And of course, we were like, hell yeah like an opportunity like this does not come around often yeah and like i'm just a dancer like that's what i love to do so my mom was like if you want to do that then that's fine Mm -hmm. it's just one more thing you can add to your resume and so we met with abby we met with a producer we sent in like a like a audition like this we had a camera my mom introduced myself she introduced herself and they had us go and do like a fake audition like yeah. i still had to for continuity reasons i still had to go to the audition mm-hmm. and like go through the whole process but i kind of knew i made the team um so then that episode took off that was the last episode of season one mm-hmm. then that next season they came to us with a seven-year contract and Ooh. basically we signed our lives away for seven and a half years wow. and that was it so there was no getting out of that contract because wow. they would sue us and it was just like a whole big thing so 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 being as a kid and signing like a seven-year contract and um being on dance moms you know i'm sure the people want to know what does that contract look like 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 what are the numbers talking about like wh- like what were they paying you back then you're actually gonna be i to this day i have no idea what i have in my bank account no but i'm saying like okay so the seven-year so, contract yeah like, if you were to guess like like how much were you getting paid for that 
I can tell you what I first started getting paid. So we signed a seven-year contract with Lifetime Television. Mm -hmm. And my mom and I split a contract of $500 a week yeah, for yeah. maybe two and a half seasons. It seems like robbery to me. No, it really is. Reality <laughs> TV is so like underground. Like they... I don't even want to get into it, but reality TV is not what you guys think it is. It is not lavish whatsoever. We got treated like animals. We obviously didn't really get paid enough. We were yeah. filming 60 hours a week oh for God. a 45 minute episode, like Whoa. from 8 a.m. to like 1030 at night. We were at the dance studio filming countless of hours of dancing, mm -hmm. all for them to basically just cut it out. Yeah. And so. By the time nah. the show really got started and was in like 150 different countries, our moms were like, okay, we need child labor laws. Our children <laughs> need to be in school. Yeah, they they need time to eat. They need time to sleep. And they need to get paid for the work that they're yeah. doing. Yeah. So you weren't in school at the time? Like, how Like how was you balancing school? And That's a great question. Because <laughs> everyone always thinks that, like, we just went to school and then went straight to dance. But... I was in school from obviously like kindergarten until fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And then I was getting pulled out of school every day at like 1130 yeah. to go to the dance studio. Uh -huh. And it was just getting so stressful balancing my life as a child yeah. in school, my family and dance and the TV show. And so my mom was like, I hate to do this to you, but you have to be homeschooled. It's the easiest yeah. option we have. Yeah. And so I was homeschooled from fourth grade up until my freshman year of high school. Wow. Hey, yo, y'all watching this video, man. Pause, man. Pause the video right now and subscribe. We need Please. more subscribers. It takes two seconds. It takes two seconds. And click the like button. Two seconds. Yeah, you'll get to see whenever we upload a new video so you can be the first ones on there to, to, to hear the, the heat that we spitting on a, on a weekly basis, man. Day in and day out. Day in and day out. Man, just take two seconds. Just like, subscribe for us, and drop a comment, man. You know what I'm saying? Say it's it. easy. You spend all day in the house anyhow. <laughs> you do something that's going to change your future for the best. <laughs> but now back to the video, man. Wow. Oh, wow. So you were talking about reality TV. So how real is it? Is Do they tell you guys to... Do they be telling the moms to, like, fight and stuff? Because I'd be confused. Like, sometimes I was wondering why <laughs> the moms... He watched it. Yeah, I did he watch watched it. He watched the show with his sister. <laughs> sometimes I used to wonder. I was like, why are the moms even there? Because I remember when I was playing Little League, my parents weren't at every practice, like, well, just watching. Yeah, normally, like, if you're not filming a TV show, the moms will drop their kids off and yeah. then leave. Yeah. But originally, they wanted the show to be, like, 80% moms and 20% dancing because mm -hmm. the moms were so interesting. Yeah. And then once the dancing obviously was being shown the viewers were like we want to see more dancing so they kind of split it 50 50 but it's not scripted which is a huge question that we always get asked yeah. it, like we weren't handed a piece of paper and they were like okay this is what you're going to say here but the producers would come in and pull us aside one by one and be like okay so we're going to manipulate this situation to where abby starts yelling at you and then you have to react or you're not going to get paid so like if our moms didn't fight back or start arguments they basically like hang a paycheck in our faces oh, and be wow. like, you're not going to get paid if you don't. Oh, this. okay. And so obviously we're like, okay, it's a TV show. Like that's not who we are as people. Obviously yeah. it's a job. We're going to get the job done. Yeah. <laughs> was there like beef behind the cameras though? Like with the moms, like um, did some stuff get personal and like, they were just like, nah, I don't like that lady. <laughs> Sometimes when there was big arguments, it would kind of lead to the off camera times of the yeah. day. Um, I mean, now that we're done filming, there's still a little bit of tension between the cast members just because of the way people left and, yeah. I don't know, just the way things ended off. But, I mean, we went through so much together. It's kind yeah. of hard not to talk to them and, mm -hmm. like, have a healthy relationship with them. But at the same time, it was kind of every man for himself. Like, mm -hmm. it was mom and daughter against mom and daughter <laughs> against mom and daughter against yeah. dance teacher. So, like, it was just a huge mess honestly nah, i'm not gonna lie that show was hilarious it was, was it? funny i'm gonna have was to it? watch it bro i ain't never watched Bruh, it it's funny ever. was it meant to be a drama or like a comedy and i mean this genuinely because it was funny <laughs> like because so as i'll be watching i'll be like ain't no way people are this standoffish so the fact that you're saying that the producer was telling you oh we need this reaction out of you it makes sense because i'm like there's no way that people are attacking these little kids like this and then going at it with the moms and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised the things that people do when there's a camera in front of them. Yeah. I think that's a huge factor in Dance Moms itself. 
people would come onto the show knowing that if they were to fight with a certain mom, they would get airtime. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like when guests would come on and compete against us, like they would be ruthless mm-hmm. and say whatever they wanted to say because they knew that Lifetime TV would eat it up. Like yeah. they knew that they would be on TV if they were to attack a eight-year-old child yeah. or start a fight with one of their moms. So it, it wasn't scripted, but people knew what they were doing. Yeah, And they were funny. The moms like actually had funny personalities. <laughs> And it is supposed to be a drama, but yeah. their personalities made it even more interesting because they all had such a specific role in the TV show, like Dr. Holly and Christy and my mm-hmm. mom. Like, they all were. Now, where can I start watching out. this at, though? I, I mean, you can watch clips on YouTube. I mean, YouTube. What do you watch it at right now? Uh, I mean, I don't watch it now. I used to watch it back in the day. When I, was... I think it's on Hulu. Yeah. Oh, all right, but, 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 I got to tune in. I got to tune in. I got to watch a little, little something. So was Abby the same way that she was on camera that she was off camera? Or did you guys ever have any rehearsals that weren't on Who's camera? Abby? My dance, dance teacher, dance. the big oh, okay. the big dance teacher. Um, <laughs> they made her look nice, actually. I'm not going to lie. For real? They made her look really nice on TV, which is alarming to some people. Yeah. Because she was... I have nothing but respect for Abby. She got me, obviously, to where I am today. Yeah. But she could have taken things a lot differently when she was coaching eight-year-old children. Like... We were eight, nine years old, and she would tell us we were fat, washed up, ugly, shouldn't be here, we're, we're too privileged, we're, we're not swift. Like, she would just say things that little kids didn't even know how to comprehend. No, that's crazy. But knew it was bad. Yeah. And, like, that just does so much to your mental health as a dancer. Yeah. But, I mean, she was funny. Like, she had her funny sides. She's an only child. Both of her parents died. So, yeah. we were like her children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she treated us like her own children but yeah. not at the same time because she was our dance teacher but we were i mean good dancers yeah, she yeah, trained right. us to be winning dancers so that's how she did it she just screamed at us yeah. and sat on our legs until so they broke so speaking about like mental health like <laughs> no, hold on one second i want to say about that i hadn't watched so i was watching like the earlier seasons and then i hadn't watched it for a while and then a yeah. clip came up where she was at the one of those the dance competitions. Is she in a wheelchair? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she was on the uh I think she told was she on her phone or did someone else tell her she to get was, off her uh, phone? My old that was my old dance teacher and she said theater etiquette and then Abby like reversed out of there. <laughs> yeah, I gotta watch this, bro. <laughs> and then the cameraman's trying to find it and she was zooming down the street. <laughs> that was probably the funniest clip I've nah. ever seen of dance moms. <laughs> I wanna ask about the pyramid. So with the pyramid, what's you don't that? even know. Like, what's the pyramid? Know about it's, this. So they used to have the pyramid you where they would rank an their performances. Okay. So yeah. every week we get ranked. So if like I fell out of my turns or if I like messed up something, I'd be on the bottom of the pyramid. Okay. okay. And if you win first place or you did amazing or your mom was really nice that week, you'd be on the top of the pyramid. <laughs> so it. I was on the bottom of the pyramid mostly every single time. <laughs> Wait, why? <laughs> because. My mom would always start drama. Yeah. Dance mom Joe, love her. <laughs> she was getting that paycheck. <laughs> and I don't know. It was just Maddie was the favorite. Do you know Maddie? Yeah. Maddie and Mackenzie, they were Abby's little little angel children. And mm. we were just kind of the background dancers. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can definitely <laughs> see where you're coming from with that one. Bit. So how did that affect you? Like, was being on the bottom, did that, like, mentally and stuff, was that hard? Or were you just like, ah? Honestly... The pyramid was like the least of my worries because uh-huh. I knew it was all for TV. Like yeah. dance teachers don't actually do that. Yeah. You, they don't rank their dancers every week. So I was just like, I take it with a grain of salt. In one year, out the other, I'm just here to dance. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it's just a TV show. But I mean, as a little kid, if you're on the bottom of the pyramid and then your mom starts fighting, obviously mm-hmm. you're going to get upset that your mom yeah. is screaming at your dance teacher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I cried like every episode of Dance Moms. No, I was the crybaby. I saw a clip. Er, I was watching a clip earlier today where you screamed at uh, a mom, a mom, and like stormed off. Yeah, and, that was me. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy <laughs> seeing you then and then seeing you now. So. I know. So just like you know, what I'm saying the times we are in, everybody's always talking about like mental health and like mental health wasn't such like a big thing back then. So just like looking back at it, like. How would you say just being on reality TV and just being famous as a kid, like how did that affect your men- mental health? And like, what are some of the things that, you know what I'm saying, you did to help, you know what I'm saying, bring yourself back up and strengthen yourself to being as confident as you are now? That's a good question. <laughs> Very well worded. Um, I mean, it was definitely tough going through all of those emotional roller coasters of like getting screamed at and then getting praised and then telling you that you suck at dancing. 
So we had a team psychiatrist who would come in and talk to us if we needed to. But ultimately, like Dance Moms made me so tough. I have such tough skin now mm-hmm. because of that experience. Yeah. Like nothing will really get under my skin, which is a good thing and a bad thing because yeah. I am super sensitive when it comes to like certain things about me. Yeah. But growing up behind in front of a camera, like it's just such a crazy perspective because you have to watch what you say. Mm -hmm. You have to watch what you do. You have to watch how you act, what you wear, how you wear it. Like you have to think of all these things that normal people don't think about. And I'm just so like brainwashed of doing that. It doesn't even phase me anymore. Yeah. And like being away from my family, like I have a dad and obviously two sisters that I never saw. And I feel bad because I basically took my mom away from them when they Mm -hmm. were going through high school and middle school. And it was just my dad and my two sisters. So it was really hard on my mom too, not being there when her kids were going to prom and getting their boy, like having their first boyfriend and all of that, like all the things that you go through. But overall, like me and those girls, we had each other and that's kind of what kept us going because only they understood what we were going through. Like it's, it's hard for outside people to understand what we were actually experiencing but like at the end of the day, we would have sleepovers every night and just like talk about our days and kind of vent to each other. And that I think really kept us sane and whole and mentally healthy. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I think all of us are very mentally healthy for the most part. I mean, yeah. obviously there's times where we're I'm saying everybody has those days. Down down and dirty. But yeah. I mean, overall, I feel like just having your close circle around you. And having the people who make you happy is like the most important thing. Yeah, it's like it's and like, to reach out. Yeah, you gotta reach out to people. It's crazy because you don't realize how young you all were, and having to deal with that stuff. It's right. like you had to like mature fast, very to mature, with, yeah. so fast. Yeah, to deal with relations like between the parents and right. Abby and you and Abby, and dealing yeah. with confrontation and conflicts and all that, and competition yeah. at such a young age is really, it's really crazy, honestly. It's also funny, too, because, like, a lot of the people who are behind the cameras working it, like, the producers, the cameramen, they were all, like, grown men telling little girls, like, okay, go sit in the bathroom. We're going to lock you in there while your parents are fighting. Like, they would lock us in bathrooms or closets or rooms to keep us away from the drama so we wouldn't interfere. And, like, just that, like, when it was happening, I wasn't even thinking about it. But now I'm like, wow. Wow. Like, we really let these people trap us in rooms for hours, having no idea what was happening to our moms. And we're just, like, sitting ducks. Like, we have no idea what's going on, but we had to follow what they told us to do or else, like, we'd probably be going home the next day. It was crazy. crazy. Damn. That's treacherous. (laughs) I need my mom to come on this podcast. She has so many secrets (laughs) I don't even know about. Man, That's I was just sitting on the couch watching the show laughing. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even think about all There's this. There's definitely a dark side to dance. No, nah, that's treacherous. It's not that dark. But nah, so, you know what I'm saying? Do my little research on you, you know? We're friends, but just something I I myself didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know you were a singer, bro. Nice like, <laughs> like really you, you released, you know what I'm saying? You released a song called Wear Em Out. And like... When did you start singing? Like, how did you get into singing? How did you go from dancing to singing? You know what I'm saying? Dropping a song. The song did good. Like, (laughs) tell us about that. So we started filming Dance Moms in Pittsburgh because that's where everyone was from. And then Abby wanted to branch out. So we moved the whole studio to California. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's that's the place where you want to, like, do everything. You got singing, acting, dancing, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so once we were filming in LA, I was like, I have the resources in front of me. So Abby got a whole team of music producers and recorders and a studio. And she's like, you're going to make music. I'm like, okay, like that sounds so fun. I mean, I was just a child. I was like, this is so, so cool. Yeah. So I filmed a song. We filmed this huge music video. It was number one on the charts. It beat Taylor Swift. Ah, That's like, (laughs) that's that's something that I'm always going to be proud about. Because I was like 12 years old. That's crazy. Lit. Really? It beat Taylor Swift. <laughs> yes, oh, it damn. beat Taylor Swift on the music video <laughs> charts. But honestly, like I was never, when I was younger, I was like, I don't want to be a singer. Like I yeah. never thought myself would be singing in California. Mm-hmm. And so I was just like, I'm going to take every opportunity I can get. I'm going to go record a song, see how it does. And it was just a cool experience because mm-hmm. now I can say like, I know what that experience is yeah. like. But oof, I was 12 back then. Do you then. still sing? No. In my car, 
I sing all the time in my car. Have you ever like thought about like getting back in the studio one day? Like I would love to, but I just feel like now people wouldn't take me seriously because I sang when I was so young. Yeah. They'd be like, why is she in the studio again? I mean, do you still have like a, a voice? Like, is it still good? Like... I mean, I think so. I mean, I just sing in the car by that's myself. A move. No. <laughs> no. No, that's so great. Um, so I hadn't I didn't know about the music thing until uh, Julia had told me so I went I watched the music video of the in the airplane hangar yeah wasn't that kind of sick yeah it was crazy <laughs> it was like kind of like, crazy and then they said like seven years ago I was like so then she must have been like 13 12 I was like yeah. oh wow no yeah, that's crazy that's crazy it was fun I was like oh top of the charts I damn know. sometimes I feel like um like Hannah Montana I live like two different lives like I'm at college mm -hmm. but then when I think about my past I was literally filming one of the top rated reality tv shows like yeah 10 years ago. It's yeah. just like so whack sometimes. Kendall K and Kendall Vertex. <laughs> yeah, right. Which one is she? That's so the true. The world may never know. <laughs> Let me rip my wig off. <laughs> <laughs> so um, dealing with that, so obviously your life post Dance Moms, you were in high school. You went to Penn Trafford High School? Yeah. That's right. All right, yeah. Penn Trafford. How was it being in high school and being you, like being you from Dance Moms? Was it hard being in high school after being in homeschool that whole time? Um, it was definitely a huge life adjustment coming back to my hometown and seeing all my friends that I haven't seen since fourth grade. Yeah. Obviously, everyone went through puberty. We all yeah. look different. Mm -hmm. We all act different and talk different. And so my mom, when I came back to Pittsburgh after the show ended, I wanted to move right back out to L.A. I was like, that's where I want to be. I want to yeah. film. I want to sing music. I want to act. I want to do all of those things. And she's like, no. <laughs> You're getting an education. <laughs> you haven't been in school in like 10 years. Yeah. I'm not going to let you just throw that away because you're so lucky you can actually have it. Yeah. And so we fought about it for so long. Yeah. I finally went back to high school my freshman year. And I'm so glad she made me do that because I felt like a normal person for once. Yeah. Because like going back to your old town, like people already know who you are. They're yeah. not going to treat you differently. Like mm -hmm. my neighbors, they were just like, oh, hey, you're back. Like it wasn't. Yeah. Awkward. I wasn't. They weren't starstruck. Right. I mean, walking down the hallway sometimes, girls would be like, yeah. "Oh my god, oh my god!" But I'm like, "It's fine. I haven't yeah. been here in so long." Yeah. But it was definitely a really good experience. It sounds so stupid. I'm like, going back to high school is a good experience for me, but it was <laughs> because I feel like that shaped me into the person I am today. Mm -hmm. Being around like normal high schoolers. Yeah. And having like the Friday night football games mm -hmm. and the proms. It was just something that I needed for my social self <laughs> yeah do you feel like so you feel like being on reality tv for that long actually made you detached from reality like what the real world <laughs> definitely <was? laughs> that's actually a really good way to put it i definitely was detached from my life back home and mm -hmm. all of my friends because i was so caught up in like we had such a structured schedule i had no time mm -hmm. to go home on the weekends or to like call my friends like we were constantly filming and when we weren't filming, we were filming music videos and going to casting calls yeah. and meeting with directors and agents. Like we had so much going on. I didn't even think twice about what School. was going on at home. Yeah. Or it sounds so awful. But like my family, I barely kept in touch with them just yeah. because it was so overwhelming. No, I feel you for sure. Because I, I know even I didn't do anything on the scale that you're doing. But even being here <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. playing football. I'll be forgetting to call my mom and right? stuff like that sometimes when you're constantly, especially during the season, you just yeah. practice, 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 school, practice. I mean, when you get into that schedule, it's like weird to mess it up because yeah. you're just on a roll. Exactly. So being in high school, you know what I'm saying, senior year comes up, it's time to pick a college. What made you choose JMU? I'm sure you could have pretty much went anywhere. Yeah, that was the most random. Like, <laughs> like, what made you pick JMU? Have you heard about JMU? Like, what made you want to come here? I wanted to go to Penn State. It was Penn State or nothing uh -huh. because being in Pennsylvania, that's like yeah. that's like the JMU of Nova. Yeah. Like yeah. Everyone from Nova goes to JMU. So mm -hmm. Penn State was like my dream school is a big school, big party school, great dance team, good football. And all of my friends went to Penn State. And I was kind of just like, okay, I'll go there too. But then I kind of realized like I have so many more options that I can be looking at. Like I don't want to stay here and have the same friend group. I want to go to a school that I know no one at. Yeah. I want to experience new things by myself and meet new friends. And so I have a lot of family from Virginia, so a lot of them came to JMU and they were like, "Tour the campus, you're going to love it. Like go over the summer. It's beautiful." So my parents and I we came down here 
two summers ago we toured the campus and i was like it's perfect mm -hmm. not too big not too small great football program they have yeah. a great dance team so like, let's do it because i didn't want to go to college after high school i was like all right i went to high school i'm done <laughs> yeah and she's like no go to college yeah. get your degree yeah. and then you can do whatever you want mm -hmm. so yeah here we are and so i love jmu yeah so you here. come on campus at jmu you know, I, I met you like shortly after you came on campus. I met you at a party. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we became friends or whatever. And uh, <laughs> and like, you know what I'm saying? Just talking to you and some of the things that like you kind of, you know what I'm saying, faced being on campus. It was like, I just remember one time like the village, if y'all know at JMU, like the village is like a freshman dorm area where, you know what I'm saying? Lived. Where you lived. And <laughs> Like people used to put like banners of your face on their windows. They had a pyramid and, of my faces. For like, real? On the windows. Yeah, like so on the windows. It. It's like everyone can see it. Like how how was it just dealing with all that? You know what I'm saying? Adjusting coming from a town where, you know what I'm saying, everyone who knew you and barely people were starstruck to now coming to a big college university where it's like people come from different parts of the world. A lot of people seen the show. A lot of people mm -hmm. knew who you were. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people saw you as a celebrity. How was it adjusting to that? coming on campus um it was definitely a big adjustment like you said there was pictures of my face on like these random girls windows and I at first I was like oh ha 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 but like I came to college to be a normal college yeah, student yeah. And to get that college experience because a few girls went to college after dance moms and I'm proud that I am here getting a college education because mm -hmm. I can and I'm lucky enough to but I actually got locked out of my dorm room the first day. I forgot, like, the little code to yeah, get in. Yeah. And so I went over to my suite mates to ask them if they, like, knew our code. And there's a picture of JoJo Siwa's face on their door. If you know who JoJo Siwa is. Yeah. You know who JoJo Siwa is. The girl with mm, the blonde hair, big bows. I've never okay, seen him. <laughs> I talked to him then. Anyways, <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm not knocking on the door because obviously they know who I am. I'm not yeah. going to ask them, do you know the code to my room? Because yeah. then they would just be like, oh, my God, we know the code to her room. Like, yeah. let's go in. Yeah. And so just like from that, I was like, OK, this is how we're going to have to handle this. Mm -hmm. And like at first, I it's normal. People didn't really know how to act. They were yeah. like, why is she here? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing here? And I was like, I'm just getting a college education. <laughs> education. What are you doing here? <laughs> like, we're at the same school. Yeah. But now that people see me walking to class, like they'll say hi. Or they'll be like, I just wanted to let you know, like, I watched you on TV. It was really cool meeting you. Tell your mom I say hi, and then they just keep on going. So yeah. a lot of people are used to it now. But it was definitely a lot to get used to yeah. and very overwhelming because I'm we're all in the same boat. We're all yeah, here facts. to get the same mm -hmm. the same degree. Facts. And it's crazy because like like when I first met you, like I like I said, I never watched Dance Mom. So like I really had like no idea who you were until like the next day I uh checked my Instagram. And I'm like, who the hell just followed me with 10 million <laughs> followers? <laughs> <laughs> like what so, but it's it's crazy because like when you meet you and like you talk to you it's like you're just like a normal person i feel like a lot of people think you're probably like like stuck up and like you're like oh i'm this famous girl that like it's completely the opposite Thank like you. like, like you're just so chill like you don't brag about your followings or your fame or your status like regular old, you know what i'm saying <laughs> just regular old kendall just like yeah. what's up you know what i'm saying i feel like a lot of people like feel like oh she's this stuck up I'm trying to tell y'all she's not. She's very chill, <laughs> very, you know what I'm saying, you. normal, regular girl. Lot. Treat her as such. That's how she wants to be treated. So it's like, it's just, it's just good, you know what I'm saying? You have that fame, but you're just chill, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. I try to be very humble about it because I don't want to come off as yeah, stuck nah, up, like little famous You're very girl. chill. <laughs> so like, when I met you, so I met you at Julio's house uh, when he had the little thing. Yeah, and then so that lingerie party. Woo, I was there. So I pulled up to there, and then at first I didn't recognize you, and then you said your name, and then I thought I was like, "Hold on, wait a minute, that's the girl from the thing." I be watching wait, with my was this sister. This semester? Yeah, no, this was no, this was my. Was it first when was your? No, oh, you probably my old house in Copper. Yeah, yeah, it was in Copper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was on Copper. the stairs. Yes. I seen. I was like, "Oh, oh wow." God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. That was like was... the first night I ever went to like an actual football party. Yeah, that... I was so excited. <laughs> wow, I'm going to meet so many cool characters. Okay. <laughs> definitely got But now nah, that was definitely team. cool. I definitely thought the same thing like, what the hell is she doing here? Like that's so <laughs> random to be Now I was like, why is she in college in the first place? Cuz I thought people who did like 
acting and yeah. all that didn't go to college for real. Unless they went to college for acting. Right. And then right. so then I was like, why is she in college? And then of all colleges, why is she at JMU? <laughs> like that's the most random thing ever. But nah, it was definitely cool and you were definitely cool people. Um and you're cool people now, obviously. But um Thank you. Yeah. Um how did how did you like when you first got here, as you were saying, you knew that people would know you're famous and then some people were doing weird stuff like having your face on the walls. How did you find that group of people that you could trust like how did you differ between people who wanted you for ulterior motives or uh were genuinely interested in being your friend um i definitely have a good radar of like who's gonna be a genuine friend and who's mm -hmm. using you for who you are coming to a school not knowing a single person i kind of had to take that risk of just yeah. like accepting people who wanted to be my friend because i didn't have anybody yeah and so then once i started like getting the vibe of who they were, I'd be like, oh, like, can't hang out today and just yeah. kind of distance myself. But there are genuinely good people at this school who mm -hmm. really want to be my friend because I'm me and not because of who I was yeah. and, like, what I have. Mm -hmm. And at first it was really hard to, like, go through that because I just wanted friends. Yeah. I'm a very social person. Mm -hmm. I will talk to anybody. <laughs> but if you have the wrong motive with me, I will not. Yeah. I will not entertain that yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. And right. that's hard at first. Mm -hmm. But like I said, once you get your group of people, like then they're, they're like, oh, well, she's going to come and talk to you because she wants Instagram followers. Like yeah. they kind of let me know because everyone's from Nova here. Yeah. Everyone knows <laughs> everyone here. And I knew <laughs> no one. Yeah. No, so it was kind of a funny experience, like meeting people. And then I would meet their friend groups and then their friend groups would come in. So I kind of just like I have so many random friends yeah. at JMU, but I love it. No, that's it's good. so fun here. That's good. You know what I'm saying? So obviously you're very famous. You know, you do have a, a <laughs> great amount of Instagram followers. And let's just talk about, like I said, I'm the controversial person on the podcast. As you should be. I'm very controversial. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you have 10 million followers. You know what I'm saying? You do have sponsorships, endorsements. Like the people want to know, like, like, what do you get from posting these, these sponsorship videos? Like what? What does it look like? What does the deals look like for having 10 million followers? Like, what do you get paid for a post here or like a brand deal here? Like, how does that look like mm -hmm. having that much following? Um, well, I definitely didn't start with 10 million followers. I've worked very hard, not very hard, but I've obviously started my Instagram at zero. Yeah. And then now here we yeah. are. Yeah. So with brand deals, the more followers you have, the more money you're going to make. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's kind of common sense. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The more engagement you have, the more money you're also going to make. Yeah. So if you engage with your followers more, companies are going to say, okay, this product is going to reach a huge audience. Yeah. We're going to pay you $6,000 to post it once on your Instagram. Or you could sign a two-month contract for 10 k a month, and you'll do four Instagram posts and like two story posts. Yeah. So every yeah. company is different, obviously, depending on how popular they are or how yeah. new they are. Mm -hmm. But like a lot of big, like I sponsor Bang Energy. They're mm -hmm. a great company. And I have, I'm going on my fourth year with them. So oh, I signed wow. a contract for a year and then we renew it. Mm -hmm. And I think at first I was doing like a video a week on my Instagram, which was a few grand, which is just money that I can put away for college or for my after yeah. life, whatever yeah. I want to do. Yeah. I don't, God. <laughs> I'm so bad with money, guys. The second <laughs> I see a dollar in my bank account, gone. <laughs> Literally gone. I am on that website shopping for that new off-white sweatshirt. But anyways, companies like, like, like Adidas, yeah. they sponsor a lot of athletes. Mm -hmm. Those are like multi-million dollar contracts. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not there yet. But it's honestly bizarre the amount of money companies will give you to post one Instagram photo. Yeah. $20,000 for an Instagram photo is insane to me. Yeah. Like I, like that blows my mind. I'm that like, people want seconds. me to post their product for that much money. Yeah. Like that's crazy. I'm just a girl from Pittsburgh <laughs> yeah. who goes to JMU and Harrisonburg. Virginia. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's crazy, nah. but it honestly, the people in the influencer world, it's a lot of pressure mm -hmm. to have to work with these companies and satisfy them because they're paying you a shit ton of money. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, it's like very overwhelming because then you have all these different companies coming at you saying, we'll give you this, we'll give you that, we'll pay you this. And it's like, okay, I need to focus on my brand. Like what companies 
do you want? are going to help me and what companies are going to hurt me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you have to really think like, okay, this is a great path to go. We'll do clothing and makeup and energy drinks, or you could go the other yeah. way. Speaking of Bang, though, I got I got to drive home later. You feel me? I'm, I'm gonna need, yeah, need one of them. Plenty of cases. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm need one of them. I, I think, I think <laughs> my that, super greens, and I got my super greens for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna need one of them too. <laughs> I think that thought one process one um, with like paying you that much for a post. I think this is what I'm thinking. So like, I take marketing classes. You do? Yeah, because I'm I a really sports get into uh, management masters right now. So the way I think the way they're thinking of it is you have 10 million followers. They could give you, let's say they give you $20,000 for an Instagram post of, with their hoodie or something yeah. like that. Out of those 10 million, if only like, what would that be? A thousand of them buy a, I don't know, $20, $30 hoodie. Yeah. They just, they made, just made that all back that already. Back. <laughs> and you got to think with 10 million people, more than a thousand yeah. are going to like that hoodie. Especially some people are in like this cult type culture where if they see a famous person wearing it or they see someone right. that they like they're wearing, gonna it. they're going to go buy it. That's pretty much what so it like, is. So that's really what there is. But I'll be, I'll be shocked by the amount of money that people Because like, you got to think about it. You got 10 mil. If it's just $100,000, I mean, just 100,000 people buy something for $1, right. it's $100,000 yeah. right there. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's a good investment on their yeah. behalf, to be honest. But then that takes you back to like, okay, what are my followers going to be most engaged with? Like yeah. A sweatshirt or... An energy, energy drink, drink. Yeah. yeah you know so that's yeah. kind of the path that i'm on right now like i kind of need to steer away from bang and start posting stuff that my followers are actually going to be interested in like yeah makeup and clothes and i don't know so so like are you are you trying to hint at uh, a kendall k clothing <laughs> line coming out i wish maybe soon kendall k clothing line you heard it here first that's, the off schedule podcast <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask, so like, do you ever feel like awkward when you do some of these sponsorship posts where you have to like set up the camera and then like, cause I, when I, when I see those videos of people where they set up the camera, they act like they're getting up and grabbing a drink and I, stuff You will like. never see me doing that. That, is, that I have morals. Like I'm not going to set my phone up and then film myself waking up. <laughs> and then going to my phone and then stop recording. Like I, I'm not doing that. But my bank videos, some of those are really damn cringy. Mm-hmm. Like some of those are like you can tell I literally was like filming that within ten seconds and then just sent it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I uh, it brings me back again. Like I want to start posting stuff that's for my brand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like bank, people K. do know me as like Kendall who posts bank videos. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to start steering away from that. Yeah. But so what are you trying to look for? Like what? Like what else? Well, I mean, after this, I'm driving to DC to do a brand a brand deal with a clothing company. Okay, are you trying so to let like, us know what clothing company? Um, I don't think I can yet. Okay, okay. It's not right, announced. Right, how about this? How about this? How about this? How about this? If you were to choose from like like three companies, let's say three companies, what three companies would you love to work with? Okay, well, designer off white that, that are that are feasible. Oh, okay. <laughs> you say the off is not feasible. No, it definitely is. I'm just no, saying. It's not, though. I'm just saying, like, if you threw out like Saint Laurent out there or something, no, like, right, yeah, like product, kind of random. But like, Louis so Vuitton. like, like feasible companies for where you are at now that could potentially, you know, what I'm saying, give you a deal within probably the next year or two. You know, what I'm saying, whoever knows. But like, okay, well, you're not going to you... know any of these companies because they're all girly brands. I mean, our followers will know. Okay, White Fox. Okay, I know uh, all my Google girls. That. Know, I know all my girls know white. Fox. I can Google that. Lululemon, like we know that we wear. Lululemon. Okay, yeah, you guys know Lulu because like. What do you mean we wear Lulu? Who's we? Men, men wear, I don't Lulu. wear Lulu. I don't know. I didn't know. Shout they out made... my boy Kelvin Azanima. He wears Lulu. I didn't know they made clothes for dudes. Yeah, they do. Kelvin wears it all the time. Oh, uh, okay. Um, this I isn't really a Lulu. company, but like goat, you know goat. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think you could definitely get Lulu. I think Lulu will. Um, we'll definitely have you. I could. They do like very bizarre campaigns with like figure skaters mm-hmm. and like I, weird I think sports. Lulu will be. Would you love to do have you. Lulu, you should wear. Can you give me ideas? Dance like, practice, right? Like you can have you with the towel. Yeah. At, at dance practice, yeah. sweating. Like you're a dancer, Lulu, you know what I'm saying? You could definitely That's wear Lulu. Like, right they make clothes at, for at you practice, guys. Yeah, like jeans, tights. You know what I'm saying? Like workout apparel. Do y'all want to be my managers? <laughs> I'm pretty hey. sure you already got one. Hey. Hey. You could do uh, no, great people. My mom is my momager. I'm a great oh, people's right? person. Yeah. I could I could do it all. You can hit I'm up sure uh, an energy drink. 
in a like prime or something someone that just prime, started out yes and you can get with that prime. i mean but bang might have a problem with that i don't know if, <laughs> i don't know if you got an exclusivity deal over there but um but yeah speaking of uh you dancing and stuff so like how did the duquettes come about so the duquettes are the dance team here at james madison they perform with the marching band at games basketball football and they go to national competitions so you're so educated yeah i know, I know. So hey, man, we do our research here <laughs> Uh, yeah, you guys really do. So wow. how did that come about? It, that was something – you said you were looking for a dance team and a football program at the college. So you already knew about the Duquettes when you were looking. I did. I looked at Jamie because I knew they had a dance program. Yeah. I just had no idea if they were even good or not. Yeah. Um, but I got very lucky with the dance team that I'm on. We aren't an athletic program, but we are part of the Marching Royal Dukes, mm-hmm. which is actually still a blessing because mm-hmm. we have, what, the best – Marching band, yeah, literally in the band, state, literally. country. Um, and so, yeah, we perform at football games. We do men's and women's basketball games. We also do, like, charity events. We did Mattathon, which mm-hmm. is for childhood cancer, I believe. Yeah. Good cause, good cause. That, so that's all fall semester. And a lot of people think that, like, that's it. But our spring semester is when we are, like, in full go time. That's when we prepare for our nationals, which is where we compete against – you guys moved up conferences, so now we had to move up conferences. Yeah. So now we're up against Clemson, South Carolina, BYU, like all these and we beat major, them. And we major, beat them. major schools. <laughs> so this is our first year competing in the D1A category, and we do prelims. And then if you make it to prelims, you go to finals. So there was 20 teams in prelims, and they only take 10 to finals. We were the top 10. Mm. See, we and tough. And then with Go Dukes. the POM category, there was only three teams. No, there were six teams, and they only took three to finals. So we were 10th place for Jazz after prelims. Mm-hmm. We were first place for POM after prelims. Hey, you oh, wow. see it. You but see it. it's hard to stay at the top. Yeah. So for Jazz, we got seventh, which was great. Mm-hmm. It's our first year in that category. And with POM, unfortunately – we lost to Iowa State. Oh man, we got second. Oh. We got beef. We got we got <laughs> beef with Iowa State. Hey, y'all heard it here. Beef. Not gonna lie, Iowa State. You guys were a little immature to us, but we're coming for your throats. So how do you how do you like how do they judge? Is it like if a girl trips here or if you if you don't spin right yeah, here? That's no, like that's actually, the stuff they look for. It's very like if you dance as one. Um, What's the word? What's the word? Unison. Unison. If you dance in unison, yeah. like that's what you get judged on. Obviously, you have like the difficulty level that they also judge you on, and like the emotion, like if you're smiling or if you're not smiling. Mm-hmm. You have like collegiateness if you're nice <laughs> to other teams, which is like the easiest ten points you can get. Yeah. But yeah, they judge you on if someone falls. Like obviously, that's a few points off, or if the timing's off within the group, that's a few points. So mm-hmm. it's a tough competition. Yeah. Not gonna lie. That's crazy. Very doggy dog world. I did good though. Yeah, we did very good. I'm very proud of my Duquettes. Uh, this love, I mean, for it to be your first time going, I'm sorry, you guys have to. No, it's up. fine. We love it. Yeah. We're in the highest category now. <laughs> That's good. And know. we're like a very underdog school. I feel like yes. but not a lot of people know about JMU. So when we went there, people Hold were on, like, now. everybody know about JMU. Well, now everybody knows about JMU. Yeah, but before because of the off schedule podcast. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so uh, no, I'm guessing there's no pyramids on the Duquettes. Oh, like, absolutely you know? not. We are. <laughs> We are a family team. Mm-hmm. Facts. Everyone's supporting everyone. No one's tearing each other down. Yeah, but so you feel like going through that Abby Lee stuff, obviously now you're a machine, right? When it comes to dancing for the Duke guests, like you just nothing phases you. No, nothing can really phase me these days. Obviously, it's very different mm-hmm. going from like six girls to like 21 girls. Yeah. There's a lot of changing that happens in between then. But when Dance Moms ended, I didn't dance for like five years. Oh, and then okay. when I tried out for the dance team, that was my first day that I ever started dancing again. And it was at tryouts for the dance team. So I was very like, am I going to make it? Am mm-hmm. I good enough? Because yeah. I had no idea what this program was like. So yeah. I didn't know if these dancers were going to be outstanding or if they were like Trash. mid-level <laughs> like dancers who are just here to yeah. keep up with their training. But I mean, luckily, they are like outstanding people. And I'm lucky enough to be a part of this team. But yeah, it was definitely a big change. Mm-hmm. That's good. Do any of your other uh, old co-stars are they on any college dance teams? Like, have you ever gone against any of them? No. So, do you know a lot of the girls on the team? On oh, this team here? No, no, no. Dance moms. 
Uh, I know a good amount. Okay, so Maddie and Kenzie, they didn't yeah. go to college. Okay. Nia went to, she goes to UCLA. Mm -hmm. I think she's on like the club, their club dance team there. Chloe went to Pepperdine. Mm -hmm. Paige went to WVU and Brooke went to Ohio State. Oh, okay. But none of them did dance there. I'm surprised. They which did. is crazy too because like we've been dancing our whole lives, but I think Dance Moms Real different. kind of ruined <laughs> they had enough the dancing. sport for us. Um, it's funny. I actually do recognize when you were saying the names, the faces were popping right? up. I actually do yeah. recognize the names. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what's uh, something that the public doesn't know about you? Like, what's the, some, or something that's a common misconception that you want to clear up? Get off your chest. Get I don't it off know. your chest. That's a hard question. I feel like I'm such an open book. Mm -hmm. My life is. But always... not too many people really know you. They just that's know what true. they've seen on TV. So it's like, like, all right, how about this? Like, other than dance, like, what's your favorite hobby or oh, something like golf. that? Yeah. Golf. I golf. So. Really? When I went back to high school, my dad came to me and he goes, since you're not dancing, you need to pick a sport. Mm -hmm. You need to make friends again. He said, you can do tennis or you can do golf. And I was like, the hell? I've never, <laughs> I've never done Why any those of two these. Sports? <laughs> my dad was a tennis pro, so he always taught tennis. So I'm like, okay. perfect. Let's do tennis. You, you can coach me. And he was like, nope, golf it is. Because you know dads. They <laughs> love their golf. God forbid. So I joined my high school golf team and I was the number three starter. And I golfed for four years for my oh, high school. Okay. You know what's crazy? We suck at golf. Really? Terrible. Yeah. So we can went you like teach us yes, one day? Yes, we can go to the driving range here. Are you gonna you gonna help us? Yes, I love I love teaching people. I think I'm golf. stiff. I think that's the issue. Like I you guys definitely have so much power in your swings though because you're so muscular. But you gotta help us like though. We could... need that. We need the swiftness and the yeah, technique. It is kind of hard to get at. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's All another right. fun fact. I feel like I don't have any fun facts about me. You got six toes or something? No. <laughs> You got six fingers. <laughs> you got six rings. <laughs> um, I'll think of something by the end. I mean, we're getting towards the end. I mean, oh. that's why. So yeah, tell me fun facts about you then. It's not about us, man. Okay, it's but now you. it is about you. All right. Fun fact about me. I like to cook. I'm a chef. You do mm. like to cook. I chef need to try your smoothies. Chef boss, you see it. You What's your favorite food? Meal preps. I, I do. You just don't watch my stories no. and stuff. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> So what's your favorite food? Me? Yeah. Ooh, I love a good chicken parm. Oh, I do like chicken parm. Like with spaghetti and garlic bread. Mm -hmm. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. I eat that every day. I like fried chicken, stereotypically. <laughs> um, I like salmon. Fried chicken from where? Or you cook your own fried he chicken? He can't cook. I can't cook. So it's not from lack chicken? of ability, but from lack of... Well, fried chicken's hard. I'm you lazy. Get, like the oil yeah. thing and the... And the chicken. And the chicken. And the fries. <laughs> so simple. I like Chick-fil-A. I like mm. Popeyes. I've uh, never had Popeyes. I should what? try it. What? Yeah, never you gotta try it. Okay, fun fact. Never had Popeyes. I've never had Taco Bell. Taco Bell, you don't need Taco Bell. You're not missing out on Taco Bell. Really? Taco okay, Bell is good. like a drunk cookout night. Like, you're not, you're I not love eating, cookout. You're not eating Taco Bell at 3 o'clock night today. Yeah, no. I do, feel like it just like looks so mid. Yeah, it's, it's like, going to hurt my stomach. Yeah, it's definitely like the late night. You know what I'm saying? You're drunk. You're like, oh, what's open? Okay, Taco Bell. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I like Popeyes is fire. Well, Popeyes, you can eat Popeyes anytime you want, though. You need to pull up. Popeyes. Okay, I'll go. I do drive to UVA to get canes, though. Oh, yeah, I love oh, canes. Next time canes you drive, exactly. yeah, I'll go. I shoot usually I hit Trader Joe's and then I hit canes. Next time you drive there, shoot me a text. I'm going to send you an right. order type shit. Well, all right, so what do you, what you got coming next? Like, what's next? Any upcoming projects? Anything you're looking to try and get into? Or, like, I know we said um, you're going to DC for the. I have definitely have a few brand deals coming up, but I don't think I can announce those yet. Okay. Sorry, my allergies. Are nah, so it's bad. fine. I got allergies too. You good? Um, what's coming up for me? Well, I'm only a sophomore, so I still. Well, I guess I'm technically a junior now, mm -hmm. but I'm studying political science and pre-law, so maybe future lawyer. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll see the next Kim K. Um. I don't know if I can say this yet because it's still up in the air, but Dance Moms might be having a reunion soon. Oh, that would be funny. So keep an eye out for Ooh. all the girls. We're gonna get we're gonna get to talking. Soon. You should bring some boxing gloves. That would be fine. <laughs> Take hold my hoops real quick. <laughs> so that's it. I'm kind of just living my life here in Harrisonburg. It's good. Taking it day by day, going to school. We got dance team. Can't wait for football next season. Mm -hmm. I miss it already. Yeah. Yeah. And just hanging out with the family over the summer. I feel like when you're at school, you're so disconnected. Not just me. I feel like a lot of my friends yeah. are like, I never talk to my mom. I just don't have time during the day. Yeah. So 
really just relaxing. Something I want to know. What are we doing for your 21st birthday? Though? Oh, God. Because I'm definitely <laughs> it's coming. literally during finals week. It's December 9th. Well, so who it's like cares? The last week who cares? Finals. I don't know. I want to do something fun, but it's literally the worst week. No, but like that's going right into winter break. So we that's could just, true. That's true. We, we could, could just do something bang it after. out winter break. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, we could. But I'm coming though. We should go to Vegas. But I'm no, saying, we should go to Tennessee. But I'm saying, I don't care where we go. Okay. I'm coming. So okay, get you're my coming. ticket ready. Yeah, no, we should have a big, big party. Get my ticket ready. Like I'm PJs, there. PJs, PJs to Nashville. I'm there. PJs to Nashville, like pajamas. No, no. private jets. <laughs> oh, I see. Hey, I, I don't got all that money. I, I don't know. Pajamas. Like <laughs> you say, like wear pajamas. You talking about some magic together. carpet pajamas? <laughs> no, PJs. No, we're talking about private jets. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, I'm hey, on that. Fault, I'm on that fault. seat. Punch my ticket. <laughs> is, there, is there anyone out there that we can just like drag into the podcast really quick? I don't know. They somebody they somebody's trying to intrude, but hey, sucks to suck. Mm. You, ain't, you ain't in my click. It's my click. But nah, I want to thank you for coming on. Of course. Really appreciate you. This was amazing. I had very so much fun. fun. Very I feel fun. Like I very inform- so much. Nah, very inf- that's the point. You just started the show. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Very informational you into your life, you know? Yeah. This is literally the first time I've ever opened up like this, so. And I'm it's glad lovely. we were here to be able to console you and oh, make you, you feel comfortable enough <laughs> thank you. to I, let yeah. it all out, you know? You know I saying? would definitely do this for Leo and you. Appreciate I'm it. I'm very glad that you guys Appreciate invited it. me. Now, we uh-huh. thank you to have you here, man. But all right, man. Make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow her on Instagram. That's we're going to have her Instagram comment. up. Get her some more. Inf- I mean, she don't need more, but she. <laughs> Everybody can get more. Instagram you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody can Spread get the more. love. Make sure you check out Dance Mom. Look out for a possible Dance Moms re- reunion boxing match on Lifetime. <laughs> Hell in the Cell. <laughs> Hell in the Cell. W- <laughs> we need to get you on WWE. That'd be hilarious. They we actually you- asked me. They asked if I wanted to do like an influencer like boxing match. Yeah. So I'd go up against another influencer girl. Why'd you say no? I literally took boxing classes for it. I was like, hell yeah, sign me up. Signed the contract, whatever. Took like six months of boxing. Never heard from them. It never, wow. it never happens. So oh. I feel she like got, just didn't guess what? Enough. We can do our own. We should get, do our own. Get one of your Me own. against Alex Earl. Get one of your, get, get somebody and we'll set it up. You know what I'm saying? Me get against Maddie we'll, Ziegler. We'll, yeah, we'll, that'd be funny. We'll book a location. You know what I'm saying? We'll promote it. Perfect. Hell in the Cell. Jam I'll take some edition. wrestling classes here from the wrestling <laughs> team. <laughs> but now, nah, man, appreciate, appreciate you guys tuning in. Appreciate you coming as always. Great times. Thank Who you knows? We might have you back on here, man. Yeah. I know. I'd love to come back. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Check I'll just back be in. a fly on the wall. I'll be your third co-host. <laughs> <laughs> for real. We actually might need a, a, a female co-host, actually. <gasps> yeah, we might be shopping. Oh, you're leading us. No, yeah, no, no, but no. We, we got we got all types of technology and we'll stuff. We'll still you know? be okay, doing good. this okay, together. Good. Okay, but good. we yeah. might just need a new addition, you know what I'm saying? Ask some pizzazz. You guys just need some female, you know some female commentary. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but all right, y'all. This has been another edition of the Off Schedule Podcast. Peace. Bye, guys.